Oh, it's live now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the uh, internet. I know you have been waiting for this your whole life. Uh, the technology is now here that we can speak to you live over the internet. So I'm Brad with the Big Family Homestead here with Will from the Weekend Homestead. How are you tonight, Will, sir? I'm doing great, sir. Back in the old studio again. We're not on the road this time, so it should be great. Rocking it, rocking it. So you you gotta you gotta tell people, man. You you've got this like life that has like ten billion different things that you've been really really awesome and blessed at, and one of them is blowing stuff up. Give me the five minute on what you did this past few days. Fourth uh, of July uh, is kind of the big season for the pyrotechnicians. Everybody has municipal shows. You go out and you go into these different towns and things like that set up. Um, I'm hopefully going to have some video here edited. I shot a little bit. I can, I can do a little bit here and there, but the short of it is that uh, we set up a show in my hometown in the twin cities and you know, we shot off a uh, pyro. There's a little peninsula that goes out into this lake area and uh, we set up everything on there. And then at 10 o'clock there's boats all around the area and there's people up in the park. I think there were somewhere between 10 and 15,000 people in the audience and you shoot the show off and they honk the horns at the end and everything else. And it's kind of fun because there's a house right over there. They have a big American flag. And before we do the fireworks, they do the national anthem and they have everybody stand up and do the, the do the whole thing and everything like that and take your hat off and they do the national anthem. And then at the end of it, boom, we do a 20 minute fireworks show. Okay. So highlights, were there any, were there any sketchy moments where you're like, uh Oh, this could really go bad. <laughs> Actually, this year, I didn't have any. Um, I did have last year when we were shooting, all of a sudden, like in the middle of the finale, I felt this concussion. Whoa. And I, I explain it as I felt this concussion in the sense of like all of a sudden it's just like, boom. And I, you just, you knew something what happened, but I didn't know what happened. We go through the whole thing, everything else. I happen to take video of it, and it's actually at the end of, um, the video that we posted last week, I posted the finale. During that finale, one shell went up about, I would say probably about five, six feet above the gun and went off right there. Ooh. I, I, I mean, it's that, that stuff happens. It's still safe and everything like that. I mean, I'm a good distance away. But when a concussion normally goes off, you know, a salute, the thing where you see the white flash and the big bang, you usually see that up at like three, 400 feet in the air. This was at 10 feet in the air, you know, straight <laughs> across. So it was, you know, it was, it was loud and that stuff happens, but we have safety things put in place that it wasn't, it was just more like the sound and the feel of it. Like, wow, that was intense. And I'm like, man, what kind of show was that? But it wasn't actually in the air. It was closer to the ground. Wow. You know, it's funny is that um, we are uh, in a state that it's illegal to own fireworks that are the really the good kind the mortar kind you can't you can't just get them you gotta have to have license and stuff uh so i i would not i would not advocate for anyone to go and get them right over the state line uh in indiana because that would be illegal but if you did and you happen to bring one back here on the fourth of july and, and light one off yeah uh, you know for your you know family or friends that'd be illegal so i would not recommend it but if you did man it's awesome so i I heard a little birdie told me that you might be moving to Wisconsin. Official. I am moving to Wisconsin. I'm excited about it. Um, and yeah, man, this is, I got to tell you what, the funny thing about this whole deal is my life has come full circle. I was born in Milwaukee, um, but, and my dad was in music and he had country Western hits. He his, his stage name was Dwayne D and he had before the next teardrop falls and, and um, and sweet apple wine were some hits, and he he did the whole you know recording label thing, and he he was very successful at it. And but I I kind of being a dork teenager, I pushed back just because you know you're a teenager, and I, I went the rock and roll route where Dad went the country western route, and I you know got the record label deals, and we went and did Christian rock, and and that was kind of my world, and everything I had done up till then was just technology, owned a recording studio, started doing video production, anything tech and record labels and all that kind of that kind of glitz and stuff like that. And just recently, in the past like eight years, starting with honeybees, um, my life has just been flipped over completely where it's like I all those things that I know how to do, they're not my passion anymore. 
I can do them and I can do them well. I can pick up a guitar and play you a song or, or do whatever with the microphones and all that or the recording. But now we're facing this life change that is amazing and exciting. And now I get excited about things like chicken coops and tractors and skid steer. What's a skid steer? I like that. That sounds good. That sounds like fun. And, um, and while I have this tech thing in my world, now it's like, we're going to have land. We're going to have gardens. We're going to have an orchard. We're going to have cows and all this stuff. And so today guys, um, I hope that you will, uh, uh, bear with me because I did not know that one of Will's many, many, many giftings is he knows tons and tons and tons about all of this stuff that now I want to know about. <laughs> so, so we're hoping to do farm tech tonight. And so with that, Will, uh, wow. I, wait, 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 hold on. I gotta, I gotta pause you for a second there. Yeah. I was going to say is fireworks are awesome in Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they're legal to have all those mortars oh and all that. Uh, at some point in time, because I know you're you're close to us. At some point in time, we will go to a fireworks store. We will buy some proper stuff, and I will show you. Yes, way of Wisconsin, dude. I I am giddy about that kind of stuff. This is going to be awesome. Uh, okay, but um, farm tech. I want to pick your brain, and you guys out there in the chat. Feel free to pipe in because I'm I'm reading the comments, and and um, if you have an opposing view or a different opinion, please feel free to voice it. And hey, by the way, Dolphin Man, I haven't seen you around, brother. I've been missing you in my de Bible devotions in the morning. Um, but here's the thing. Here's my scenario. When we sell our house, I'm going to have a limited amount of money to get this farm and we're going to start out as a micro farm because I don't want to attack a billion things at once because I feel like that's just a, a, a mistake waiting to happen and animals dying and all that kind of stuff. So I have a small amount of budget and I need to, I have, I have a barn that is set up for a dairy. I've got, I'm going to start out with my goats, which will start out with about six goats. I'll have uh, a mama cow and a baby cow. And we'll probably try to add a steer for, you know, food or two and uh, chickens and rabbits, stuff that I already know how to do. We're going to keep it small. However, we have this facility now. So where do I start? I, I mean, you're, you're, you're looking at tractors versus ATVs versus UTVs, skid steers. It's a big topic and we're going to have to attack it. I kind of think just start talking because um snow is an issue what do you do with snow do you put it on an atv do you deal with a, a vehicle so let's start it with tractors what what are the pluses and minuses on a on a mini farm for a tractor um all right so the first thing i tell people because i get in if you've been to our channel everybody knows that uh we support the uh orange brand over at our channel here so i don't know if anybody knows that or not but uh so do I. It's no just sponsor different. or anything like that. Just saying. Yeah. In case. Yeah, just saying. Um, but uh, to, to be serious, the first thing I do is I ask people, let's talk about what you're going to do. Like, I know you have hay. I know that you have a barn. I know that we're going to have to deal with snow at some point in time. We're going to have to deal with all these different things. At some point in time, you're going to have to figure out a way to handle them. Some of them you can do yourself. Some of them you're going to need equipment to help you with. So... The first thing I tell people when they start a farm, start whatever, figure out what you need. Like if you're going to have gigantic gardens, it might be important to have a tiller or something like that to till up. Or um, you might have to have a tractor that has a fork and a bucket on it because you're going to be moving bales of hay. Or you have to have something that has a three-point attachment or a PTO on it. And I, we can get in all these terms and stuff like that. But those things drive implements and things like that. So what I tell people to do is start with making a list of what are your immediate concerns. I know one of your immediate concerns is how to deal with snow because you are going to have snow. You are in Wisconsin. It's a thing you have to work on and figure out. You can do it the easiest way, which is get a shovel and start doing it. But I know the size of your driveway. You'll do that once and you'll never do that. Negative. Negative. <laughs> so that, that's the first thing I say is to talk about some of the basic things. Like we talked about the hay. We talked about all these different things. The other thing you can look at is 
you don't have to buy everything. You can rent things. And that's one way that I do a lot of things is I'll get a tractor that can run different functions and then potentially rent the tools. Because why spend $600, $800, $1,000, dollars on an implement that you're going to use twice a year when you can rent it for $70 at the local rental shop? Do whatever you need to. Now you don't have to maintain it. You don't have to store it. You don't have to whatever. So those are things you have to think about. I guess where I would start is let's go through the questions that you had. You know, we were talking earlier a little bit about like, how do you get started? And and, and let's set budget aside for a second and talk about practicalities. Okay. And okay. Okay. Well, uh, what my, and, and I have to say perceived needs because I, I can't say that I know what it's going to be like to live there because I've never lived there since I was a baby and don't know that. Uh, so perceived needs, I'm going to have to be able to move heavy things like lots of feed, uh, hay, I'm going to have to move. I do not know uh, if I will be able to afford uh, a device to get the hay into the hay loft uh, because the barn has a hay loft. Uh, and I would, I'm assuming I would need something that has hydraulics to get things up there. But we're going to have to move poop. We're going to have to move heavy things. We're going to have to um, move snow. We're going to have to eventually, um, I don't know, I, I guess just a lot of uh, digging. Uh, we, we know that um, by looking at where the home is, we're going to have to really consider uh, putting up some windbreaks, either brush or trees. So I'm thinking if, if in eventuality an auger might be in, uh, in, the, in the mix. But the first things first is moving heavy things and snow. Okay, so tractors do two real things. They either rotate or they push-pull. That's really the functionalities of every implement that goes on a tractor to the basic kind. You can cover 75% of the things tractors do by one of those two things. They're either pushing or pulling or they're rotating in some way, shape, or form. When you're looking at tractors, the one thing that people always bring up are, does it have um, a PTO, power takeoff unit? And basically what that does is allows you to shift some of the engine's energy into a device that rotates that then you can run rotary equipment. Snowblower, which rotates, the front of it rotates. Um, lawnmower, the blades rotate. Brush cutters, you know, those types of things. Tillers, those all rotate. So you're using gear systems to move that energy to do something productive. Then the other piece that people talk about are front end loaders or hydraulics. You know, like having a bucket on the front to be able to lift and, and lower things. I will tell you this, that if I was going to recommend any tractor to anybody today, have a front end loader on it in some way, shape, or form if you can afford it. The reason why is you can you, you do so many different things. You can grade your driveway. You just take the bucket, put it down, drag it back. If you need to lift something, move something, dig something out, um, clean up poop, just drive forward with the bucket, scoop it all up and put it over wherever you need to move it, things like that. Those are really important things to do. And the best part about it is, is most hydraulic systems are really easy to maintain that if you learn some of the basics of how the hoses work or the connectors work and things like that, you can definitely do a lot of different things and you don't always have to take it to the shop to have it maintained. That's the nicest part about it. Now, now in terms of the hydraulics, okay, what I'm seeing, because I have been uh, pretty much checked out of life and spending hours and hours and hours on Craigslist looking at every tractor known to man. And it seems like there's some things that are universal. And then it seems like there's other buckets and hydraulics that they just kind of jerry rig to put them on there, uh, like screwed them on, bolted them on, and then welded them on. Is that something that's like common or is that just, you know, hey, Joe Blow had to get it done and he got it done? Oh, yeah. No, tractors, I will tell you this. There's all, like, uh, I think we talked about this on the phone. I'm going to talk about two specific points. One is there's, and I, I don't have a better way to say this, so I'll try to say it delicately, is there's male ego that goes in a tractor, which causes people to tend to buy tractors that are way bigger than they need or add functionality and things like that that they could easily do with a smaller attachment, but they end up getting the biggest thing because they want the most horsepower, most engine, biggest scooper, biggest tires, bigger, whatever it is. And then the second part of tractors is there's two types of tractor owners in the sense of the purists who buy the machine, use it the way it was intended, use the attachments the way they were intended, and then the tinkerers or the inventors, as I like to call them, where they figure out a way to make things work. 
none of those groups are anything's wrong. If you want to buy a tractor bigger than what you need and you have the ability to afford it, then go for it, enjoy it, do what you want to do. Or if you're the person who doesn't want to do that and want to buy a tractor that fits your needs specifically because you're on a budget or you kind of have to sacrifice on some things and eventually build up to it, buy a tractor that fits there. If you want to buy one and just use the implements on it, buy one and just use the implements on it. If you want to buy one and tinker with it and do that because that's part of your hobby and you're frugal and you want to save some money and rig some things together, that's the best part about it is the tractor world is accepting of all of those things. And when you go on Craigslist, you will find all of those things. Yeah. And, and that's that dude. Yeah. And you've seen, I've seen so many different combos and it's really awesome. You can see people's ingenuity. One quick question from uh, he provides homestead, Brad, might you be able to trade work for tractor use? Well, let me tell you where I, where we're at right now. It is my intention not to uh, be bailing and cutting our own hay or rather cutting and bailing our own hay. Cause right now, it looks as though we have about 10 to 15 acres of hay. However, um, there are farmers out there who, who've already approached us to bale it and split it. You know, we get a cut, they get a cut. And for right now, my money says, don't get into that kind of thing. Save your money on a baler. Let somebody else do it. As long as I got enough hay for my animals, I want to make sure that I'm being wise, good steward with the money we have and making the most bang for the buck. And which is, this is great talking to you guys and seeing some of these, um, these questions, but that's where my mindset is. And now actually the, the other thing that's kind of cool is one of the farmers that approached us to do the hay, he said that a lot of guys are renting people's silos now. And what they do is they take the hay and they've got a, like a super fine chopper. And they chop it really super fine and they blow it into the silo and it actually starts to ferment in the silo. So it makes it a much more uh, mineral rich feed for their animals and they'll pay you to, to rent those um, the silos. And so I, I'm, I'm interested in finding out what that means and what my responsibilities would be. I mean, I have no idea. Like somebody rents your silo. Does that mean, you know, he's there twice a day or is it, you know, I mean, what kind of access, all that kind of stuff. But, um, oh yeah, Barn Geek says, cutting hay on shares is a great idea. Hey, Debbie Chun, it's been a long time since we've seen you. Anyway, um, yes, that there's the answer is we are, we're fully aware that I do not intend to overspend what we can use on the farm. Well, the other thing too is you can always add to it. So your first investment is always the tractor. I recommend if you can get a tractor with a front end loader that matches because you want to make sure that you don't get a front end loader that's matched to a 50 horsepower tractor and you have a 25 horsepower tractor because you're going to damage your equipment. You want the stuff to match up. Give you an example. We have a Kubota BX25. It came with the, um, the bucket on the front of it and it's matched to the tractor. From that point there, that's where Kubota ends for me. Everything else has been as time goes along and as budget affords and things like that, I've been adding small things to it. I mean, our tractor and our implement collection that we have and the things that we have put together took years to put together. We made the investment in the tractor and actually that's a whole nother thing is the way we started was we bought a tractor and then I ended up bringing it home, fixing it up, selling it on Craigslist, using that money to buy another tractor, fixed it up, sold it on Craigslist for more, and eventually worked our way up to it because tractors can be kind of expensive. I mean, it's just one of those things. You can buy a cheap tractor, you can buy expensive tractors. I mean, they're all over the board. The thing you want to do that I recommend is buy a tractor with a front end loader that matches to it, and then as you need it, as you can afford it, either rent or buy attachments that suit your needs. If you're only going to use a post hole digger once, why spend $600 on a post hole digger in the auger when you can go to the rental place and get it for 120 bucks, do your thing you need to do during the day, and then return it at the end, you just saved yourself a significant amount of money. All right. Well, let me let me let me get into a sticky wicket, as it would be said, with tractors versus uh, say skid steers. Now, a skid steer, those look really cool to me because they're super compact, and it seems like they do a lot of what tractors do, except for the fact that. Their wheels are really not designed to go out into a field unless you've got the uh, the tank tread looking things. What would you, how would you, you know, apples, because they're not apples to apples, but how would you, 
you know, kind of go, well, this one has an edge over this one and this one has an edge over that one. Tractors versus skid steers. My opinion on skid steers is the skid steer was originally intended for medium to larger construction and they kind of worked their way into the farm realm. For a beginning farmer, it's expensive. You can buy a cheap skid steer, but you're buying yourself a whole pile of problems in my opinion. Skid steers under $5,000 tend to have engine problems, a lot of rust, under horsepower, bad tires, transmission problems. There's always something with it. So you might be getting into a skid steer and it's gonna do a lot of things. It's small, it's compact, it can get around, but you're not gonna find a track driven skid steer for um, $5,000. So in that case, now you have to get chains for it or you have to buy the slide on uh, treads that also work. What are the condition of the tires? What's the condition? I myself, I like skid steers. I'm not here to say anything negative about skid steers other than they're expensive. If you have a business where you're doing blacktop or asphalt, or you have one of those farms that's churning $500,000 worth of, you know, hay and corn and silage, and it's a whole operation with semi trucks and everything like that, and you have a big operation, I can see how you'd need a skid steer. Most small um, farms, I don't want to say from like the hobby farm to the specialist farm to the people who are just getting going, like your scenario, I think a skid steer is overkill. If you can afford it, awesome. But the attachments even for a skid steer, like for me to get a grapple for my tractor is like $1,500. To get the same grapple for a skid steer that's the equivalent is somewhere around $9,000. It's not even in the ballpark. Well, you know, and, and this is one of the things, okay, this, this is culture shock for me because like I said, I came from a background in technology and I know how expensive things like microphones can be and computers and Pro Tools systems and, and speakers. Like uh, it's not uncommon for a, a microphone that'll be used on a hit record to be, you know, $8,000 or more, just the microphone. Then you got the cable and you got all this stuff. And I understand that that stuff's expensive, but what's been kind of a a mind blown kind of experience for me is how much money farmers have into their equipment is like, whoa. We're not even talking into the real big stuff. I mean, there's people who have $400,000 worth of equipment driving in their fields. I was looking at one tractor at the state fair. We were talking about it earlier about going to the state fair and everything like that. And I asked the guy, I said, well, how much is a tractor? He said, well, this one here, we've got it on special right now. It's 450. And then you can get the uh, spraying attachment for 80000 And we have a thing, if you buy two other implements for $50,000, you can get this. I'm like, you've got a half a million dollars tied up in your tractors. I can see how farmers, there's this notion sometimes that farmers are bent over by the um, banks and by all these different groups because they're tied up into all this um all these loans out there, both for the land and for all the equipment. And then they do all the math at the end and they barely break even or lose money and things like that. And without the subsidies, they couldn't make it. It's because the equipment is so expensive. I mean, it blows my mind. Well, and the, the other thing for me was just the perception because in, in, if you're not in the world of uh, farming or homesteading or any of that kind of stuff, there's a perception that the farmers are the backwoods guys and they just, but they have so much money tied up into these things. If people realize just how, how hard it is to make their world work and they do it and they do it with big bucks and then, but they also do it when they don't have anything, they figure out a way to make it work. And I got to tell you what, it's been a, a real eye opening experience in that they have a bad rap and, and holy smokes, these guys are getting it done. They're, they're doing it. And th this idea that they're backwoods and stuff like it's so silly when you actually start looking into it. Most of them have more money invested in their equipment and their, their farms than, than a lot of medium sized businesses. Just one guy. Yep. No, it's, it's, it's amazing. And then they maintain that equipment themselves. They service that equipment. They run that equipment. Then they come home and they do the books and everything else. I mean, a lot of people don't realize how challenging it is to be a farmer. That's just, I mean, we could have a whole talk on just that. But going back to the conversation, the, the tractor piece is an interesting one because you, as you were talking about your equipment for the audio side of the business where you had like, you know, the amplifiers and the wires and things like that, and you could buy, you can buy a $10 microphone and you can buy a $10,000 microphone. Tractor world is the same thing. You can buy an inexpensive tractor, you can buy an expensive one. The one tractor I recommend to a lot of people, if you can get your hands on it, you can find one on Craigslist. And 
It's an easy one for pulling and running small pieces of equipment, a back blade or any of that kind of stuff. Is like a, a Ford uh, 8N or a Ford uh, 9N or something like that. It's an older tractor. They were built back, I think, starting in like the 50s and 60s. Um, but a lot of people have refurbished them. You can find them for between $1,500 and $3,000. It has a PTO on the back of it, so you can run a sickle sigh or a, a brush cutter or whatever. It's got the big tires, so you get good traction, things like that. You could put a blade on the back. You could do your snow and all that kind of stuff and maybe start out with something like that. The one hang-up, usually they don't have a front-end loader with it, so that would be one thing that you'd be giving up on that, but you're also not laying out eight thousand to ten thousand dollars with it for a tractor that has a front end loader yeah and what okay i need to expand the um the palette here because i have my needs like i said i've got to be able to move heavy things around i've got to be able to move snow and it's a big piece of property well for us for us it's a big piece of property 30 acres i don't want to have to be walking from corner to corner five times a day you know if we're doing a project out in the back corner I want, to, I want to be able to have to have something to ride on, something to carry my tools, carry my materials with, whatever. Um, so let's enter the realm of ATVs, UTVs, and then kind of keeping still in mind the tractor thing because I've got to move snow, but I've also still got to move equipment and tools to and from. I don't want to tear the ground up with a tractor if I'm driving you know, a certain path. I guess I would have to make paths that are just generally, you know, you, you know that this is going to be a path and that's it. It's torn up. Uh, but an ATV for plowing snow versus a tractor or a skid steer. A skid steer seems like that's not going to work unless you got the treads, the tank treads. Well, you can do chains on them. And skid steers actually work pretty good for moving snow. But I'll be straight with you. We've got 160 acres and most of my snow uh, is dealt with uh, plow in the front of an ATV. So we bought it's, it's an older Honda. I mean, it's probably 10 years old or whatever, and it runs really well. It wasn't the most expensive thing out there. We got a plow for it, and it was the easiest way to handle snow, just plowing it around the driveway. In the wintertime, the thing about an ATV is if you have good tires on it, you can drive it in the winter in the snow. You can drive it in the summer. You can use it for hauling. You could easily put a box on the back of it or a box on the front of it. If you need to drag something somewhere, I mean, we bought on Craigslist a trailer that has the big nubby tires that are about the same size as an ATV. And I can pull up somewhere and we load in, you know, eight to 10, you know, four to six foot logs in the back. And I'm talking logs in the back of it and then just drive through the woods like nobody's business. So, you know, an ATV is actually probably the best utility vehicle you could get in the beginning. Because let's say you had to haul a bunch of stuff out to the back corner of the property like you were talking or go pick something up or you have an animal issue or whatever it is. You could easily tie a chain to something and drag it with an ATV. You could easily... Uh, get a trailer and load it up with some material, something for the garden or whatever it is, and move things around. And it's very versatile. Almost anybody in your family can run it, which is cool. You don't have to have any real special training. Plus, it it can be kind of fun, you know, tooling around on your property on your ATV, checking things out, doing whatever. And the best part about it is, is ATVs, the price point is significantly less than a tractor. Um, you know, some cheap, uh, older ATVs, you know, 80s, mid-90s, somewhere probably around that $500 to $1,500 range. I don't recommend those because around 2001 to 2005, a lot of technology changed in ATVs where they have locking differentials or they have four-wheel drive or the transmissions work better. You know, real simple things that make your life easier. And to spend that little bit of extra money is amazing when you actually have to take it out and use it. So like our ATV, when we bought it, it was 10 years old and I think we paid $2,900 for it, but it came with a plow. So I could plow the driveway and it's been running ever since. So now let's talk about um, dealership versus uh, private, you know, Craigslist kind of thing. Um, I, I, I am going to be open and honest and say, I don't know what the heck I'm talking about when it comes to this. So what my, I'll tell you here, Scouts Honor, this is what, this is what my goal is because I've been reading all you guys' comments. Trust me, I'm reading Flannel Max, Paya. Captain Jesse, Brad Tolly, Moby. I'm reading all you guys' comments and I'm and I and from other videos. And one thing that I keep seeing occurring again and again and again is they say find somebody who's an old timer out there and start bringing them food. Make friends with the old timers out there so that they can help you get from point A to point B. And I'm I'm not talking about like using anybody, but developing friendships with people 
because this is a new world for me, and I wouldn't know if ATVA, unless it was like dripping oil and stuff that was obvious, I wouldn't know if it was good or bad versus ATVB. Um, so I'm just trying to get general knowledge right now uh, and, and seeing what I should probably focus our monies on um, now let's talk about UTVs because UTV is basically an ATV, just an extra row of seats, right? Well, let, let before we get to that, can I answer the other question? Sure. And I Absolutely. saw a couple things that came up in the chat here. First off, in all of this, I guarantee you that if you got 10 of us together and we all started talking about this, that you asked one question and there was 10 of us there, you'd get 13 answers. So everybody <laughs> has their opinion regarding it. Some people like Fords, some people like Chevys, you know, they're both pickup trucks. In all reality, they're both pickup trucks, but some people are diehard towards one towards the other. So you do run into that. Some people are um, into different things and it's all about what fits the needs of what you have. We have a tractor and an ATV. There's a lot of times where I wanna zip out somewhere and I gotta take a drill and some tools and things like that out to the other side of the property and I don't wanna walk out there. It's easier to take the ATV and go through the woods or go out to a certain part of the property and do some things versus loading up a tractor and driving it out there. You know, so, but there's also other things like snow removal. Yeah, tractor probably would be better, but a tractor also could be eight to $10,000 versus an ATV where you could get into it cheaper if you're looking to be on a budget in the beginning, which is how we started this whole conversation. So I just wanted to capture those two things because. A lot of people have opinions. Some people say John Deere is the best. Some people say Kubota is the best. Oh, New Holland, I got to get a Bobcat. You got to get a, uh, you know, whatever. And, and everybody will have an opinion. And the best part about it is, is nobody's really wrong because it's probably right for whatever they're doing. You got to figure out what's right for you. That's the most important, which goes back to the first thing we talked about, which is figure out what you need to do and then find the right things to fit those tools. Well, and I agree. But also, too, I don't want to spend stupid money. If I if my need is move snow, lift heavy things, I, I don't want to um, I don't want to buy something that I'm gonna have to buy again. And I learned this lesson again and again and again through my life. Like we used to be in a band, and uh, when you're starting out in a band, you don't have any money. And when you don't have any money, you make bad choices with the vehicles you have because you got to get to the gigs. And if you don't get to the gigs, you don't get enough money to keep going to the gigs. So you buy crappy vehicles that break down. And when the crappy vehicle breaks down, you don't have enough money to get a good vehicle. So you buy another crappy vehicle that eventually will break down. And it happens again and again and again until you finally go, stop. We're just going to save up our money and we're going to get something good. And that's one of the things that I've learned that if you don't buy a good tool, you're going to buy it again. And so... That's where I'm really trying to figure out, okay, if I got to pick one thing and get one good thing, it seems to me like a tractor is, is where I'm at right now, but I want to ask more questions. Well, let's ask, answer your other question, which is, is it better to buy from a dealer or is it better to buy from a private party or an auction or all those things? Because I bought from all of them. I've bought from dealerships. I've bought from private parties. Honestly, the biggest mistake I've made is to buy something from a dealership. Uh, I'll be honest with you, it's awesome that they have a warranty, but I'm a pretty handy guy and I can take care of a lot of the issues that are out there. Some of them I can't, like the accident that I had with the tractor a couple weeks ago, I couldn't fix that. But anyhow, we'll get to, that's a whole other story. But my point is, is that when you drive off the lot with your car and it's brand new, it drops in price almost immediately. The same thing happens in the tractor world, the ATV world, and so on. The other thing that happens is people buy things bigger than what they think they need and then they figure out that they don't use it like, oh my gosh, I need a 60 inch tiller. I'm going to use it all the time and so on. Then they figure out they don't use it. It's been sitting in the barn for three years. It's still perfectly fine. And they blow it out on Craigslist for a cheap amount of money. I have the Craigslist app on my phone and I guarantee you I have the farm implement and um, the uh, vehicle one flagged for Northern Wisconsin, Minnesota and Illinois, Iowa. And it'll just tell me when there's things that I'm looking for that come up on, on Craigslist and you just have to start watching and go, well, there was a guy last week who had a tiller that was $600. This guy's got one for $400. I'll go look at it. And you, once you start looking at these things and start doing different things with them and learning about them, you'll start figuring out which ones are deals and which ones are not. Just like I bet you, you, you could take me shopping and I couldn't tell you what a good instrument is. But if you went shopping, you could say, yeah, that's a good instrument. That's not a good instrument and so on. I'm like, well, they're all guitars. 
they all look like guitars. Same with taking me tractor shopping with you. I could say, Absolutely. well, that's good because of this and so on and so forth. Absolutely. And uh, Lone Star, I, I don't know the whole situation that you guys have been chatting back and forth, but um, yes, we have been petitioning the Lord for every bit of everything that has gone on. Uh, and I got to tell you what, guys, when all this is said and done, when we're there, we're going to make a series of videos or maybe just an you know interactive Q&A to tell you how God put all this together because God put all of this together. There's no way any of this happened for, for by accident. Okay, so Barn Geek, uh, you got that 100% right, Brad. I have bought so many used tractors and I'm sick of having broken tractors. I decided <clears throat> this week that I'm buying a new tractor. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, and I needed to work when I need it. And here's the other thing too that I've discovered, guys, is that location definitely um, affects price. I started looking at tractors here in the Cincinnati area, and then I was like, okay, I started getting an idea of price on you know tractors, ATVs, skid steers. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. <clears throat> And then I started looking in different areas like Kenosha and Wausau and Eau Claire up there. And holy smokes, the difference in price if you just drive a few hundred miles away. And um, it's obvious, and it was one of those duh moments. It's like a supply and demand. Where are all these tractors that nobody's using? Well, where they used to use them, of course. That's kind of that, that, that's funny that you bring that up because that's why I look at Iowa or I look at Illinois or I look at different parts of Wisconsin because it, it it's funny there's the, when I did that I would buy a tractor or buy a piece of equipment and I would bring it to the city we'd wash it clean it up and fix it and then I'd put it on Craigslist in the city where all the people are yeah and people would buy them and then take them out to their things again and you'd make money on each one of them every time you did that kind of stuff so well, you know what what blew me away was when I started looking at boats when I when I was in the Wausau Craigslist area I was looking at boats that were like you know 24 foot pontoon boats with a nice cover over, you know, 60, 60 horsepower Mercury, 3000 bucks with a trailer. And that's kind of like normal. And, and here you couldn't touch anything like that for less than 15, $18,000 at all. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's it, and the, somebody posted, Hey, do they have tractor sales where they sell stuff like police auctions and things like that? Absolutely. Um, Crashedtoys.com is based out of the twin cities. And it's a website where you have a snowmobile and it crashed or it's got a broken windshield or a dealership has something that's totaled or there's something wrong with one of the brand new ones because it got scratched on the dealership and they're blowing it out. Crashtoys.com, there's tons of websites like that where you can go in. The auction ones are kind of a little tricky because you have to, in some auction cases, you have to be a member of the auction house and you have to show that you have the funds that you're able to purchase in the auction house and then they let you get involved with the online auctions and things like that. Um, there's always share of sales. Like if a, the one of the best places I've seen to buy implements is actually estate sales and things like that. You know, a farmer dies and the family gets the thing and they don't want the house anymore. They go into the barn and they push everything out into the yard, throw price tags on it, and it's all negotiably. Like, hey, I'll give you that hay rake for uh, you know what price, and then you know they'll take it because they're closing out the estate. So surprisingly enough, estate sales in rural areas are actually really good places to pick. Um, you know, implements, at least for your stuff. Tractors, a little bit harder to get, but implements, tools, accessories, things like that for your farm needs, it's actually a pretty good place to get them. All right, now I'm going to open up a can of worms that will probably not be closed anytime soon, uh, and that is this, because I'm going to be headlong into, uh, well, frankly, the internet is one of the ways that my family makes money. I, I do video work, I do editing for people, I do all kinds of stuff, and uh, I'm... We're, we're headlong moving into a rural area, and I am told that, that is one of the biggest divisive topics that you have. I personally have experienced HughesNet, and if I had to do HughesNet again, I might sincerely consider offing myself because it, it was horrible. It was horrible, and caps, and expensive, and it's just horrible. Is there any actual real live choice <sighs> oh um tommy from off-grid nation and i have had hours of conversation on rural internet i myself personally am 
struggling with rural internet, so I'm not only the uh, client or the president of the company, but I'm also the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. so, like so I, I have rural internet issues. Um, the first thing I would do is call your phone company. So find out who your phone company is and see what version of DSL they have. Because almost all phone companies now offer DSL in some way, shape, or form. So depending on what your phone company is, give them a call and say, here's my address. What DSL service is available? I know where your location is. I'm not going to disclose it, but I know that you most likely don't have cable service where you guys are. So that's going to be out of the equation. So now it brings it down to having DSL, which could potentially be pretty poor, but it might be better than nothing. And then the other two options are something terrestrial. Either and there's three there's three real options. There's cellular, which is like a Verizon hotspot or AT and T hotspot or something like that. Then you have a microwave where you mount an antenna up on your house and it's picking up a microwave signal from a distance. You can mount it on your silo or your house or something like that. And if there's a provider that provides it, which actually, depending on how far you're from Wasa, I haven't looked at the map. You might be able to pick up microwave from from Wasa if there's a provider there. And then the third way is by satellite, like HughesNet, those types of things. So those are those are really your three options. I will tell you that in order of cost, HughesNet and satellite is going to be the most expensive. Microwave will be the second most expensive or second least expensive. And then of the terrestrial options, cellular is actually the least expensive these days. Now, is live streaming out on any of these? Last week, we did a show live driving in the car down the highway with you on this very channel at this very time on my Verizon cell phone. And it worked perfectly fine as far as I know. And nobody complained and said there was a problem. Well, it dropped out a few times, but generally it was pretty awesome. It was pretty awesome. It was driving it in a car, hopping between cell towers through rural Wisconsin. I mean, we were really kind of stretching the technology at that point. Yeah, no, no doubt there. Well, what about the microwave thing? Because I've actually had somebody contact me and say, hey, I, I do this thing. I noticed you have a silo. You can put a, a device up on top of there. Explain how that works. Is it just an amplifier and a receiver and it just picks up internet that's broadcast? How's that go down? Yeah, so there's a central location. There's an office and a hub that broadcasts out. If you've ever seen those little domes that have like the little cone on them and they're kind of pointed in a couple different directions on a big tower, those are microwave receivers and transmitters. And basically you get a little device on your house that replicates what that device is and through microwave technology it sends it back and forth the interesting thing about microwave technology has been used for a long time and the speeds are actually relatively good you can actually get better than cellular speed on microwave and give you example verizon if i'm on a 4g lte uh u1 connection i can get up to 40 megabits on my phone so microwave you could get anywhere between i think it's between like 10 and 25 megabits a second depending on your provider the problem with microwave is the second you have fog or rain or anything along those lines the the difficulty you have and the second item is the closer you are to that microwave tower the better your signal so if you're one of the furthest people out there you might get the lowest amount of signal it's just like dsl the further away you get the worse it gets so that's one of the things that you have to look at when you're looking at microwave is it's all about location 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 so now is this the kind of technology that if if i if i decided for whatever reason to climb up on the top of that cellular it's going to start cooking me like my oven in the house. I don't think it's that powerful. <laughs> well, that's how they discovered it, isn't it? Isn't that how they discovered it? There was guys up north, and they, they figured out, you know, in the Arctic uh, military stations, they figured out it was really warmer if you stood over here by this tower. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the birds are just bursting into flames. are coming by. Just boom, boom. Yeah. So it sounds like I've got my options are look at the look at the phone company DSL possibly, but that would be horrible. Um, cellular, I could probably get away with doing something and it might be okay. Um, but of cellular, microwave, and satellite, satellite seems like it's out. HughesNet, I hated it. I hated it. It's different today. I do have to tell you, HughesNet is different. Um, Tommy and I have talked about it a lot. HughesNet has now launched gen the next generation of their satellite. It's a lot faster than it was before. The data amounts are a lot higher than they were before. I mean, so you have Google Wi-Fi. I've got Google Wi-Fi. We've talked about this to nauseam on this channel. Um, Google Wi-Fi will tell you how much data you're using. Just whip open the app, and it'll tell mm -hmm. you how much data you're using. You'll be able to figure out whether or not you are a HughesNet customer. Because, like, I checked mine, and we use 75 gigabytes. Well, the 75 gigabyte plan is $150 a month. 
But right. we, looked, we looked at it a different way, which is we have uh, 1.5 megabit, and it's really slow. I mean, that's just a click faster than dial-up on our DSL, but it's unlimited. So I don't have to worry about the amount of data or things like that. The only thing we can't do is we can't do live streams from the homestead, but I can do email, I can do Skype calls, I can do, I can watch Netflix, we can watch YouTube and all that kind of stuff. The biggest challenge is, is that the bit rate's not high enough to do what we're doing right now on DSL. But I will say this about DSL, is if I lived five miles further north or five miles further south, I'd have 10 megabit DSL, wow. which would be fast enough to do it. And it's $39 a month versus $150 a month for a HughesNet. Yeah, what do you do? Well, I'm going to have to look into all this stuff because I'm not giving up on this. I, 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 I love doing these live shows and I know a lot of you guys enjoy them. Um, so we're not, we're not throwing in the towel, but I got to figure out what it's going to cost because it seems to me like if there is something in, uh, Wausau or even, um, maybe, uh, Medford, Medford's not too far away, uh, with a microwave that might work. Um, however, okay. So questions i'm going to scroll through some questions as we kind of round out the evening and by the way guys if you are not already a subscriber to the weekend homestead i put a link in the description of this video please do go over there and become a subscriber will is a rock star and he's he's one of those he's like uh what do they call those guys the not a millennium man where they're just really they've been gifted in so many things a lot of people don't know he's been a firefighter he is a tech company president that's pretty cool. He's also a homesteader, and he really brings a lot to the table, um, obviously. And so if you're not already, please go over there, click that subscribe button, and make sure that you're subscribed to his channel. Um, but also, um, I want to say thank you, guys, because something happened just right before this broadcast started uh, that's it's kind of a cool monument, and uh, my channel hit 50,000 subscribers. What? So, yeah, just happened like right right before we got going. And so I wanted to say thank you. I got to figure out something cool to do. I was getting, I was what, around to see if I have any fireworks in here I could shoot off. No, well, don't do that. You're next to your furnace. <laughs> be fine. But what would be, what would be a cool thing, guys? Are there uh, any ideas? Yeah. I mean, we could do some kind of giveaway. That'd be kind of cool. Actually, you know what? I don't know if BC Truck's still here. But if you guys don't know BC Truck Brad, he's a rock star. And he has been working on a knife, a custom-made, handmade knife for my wife. And it came in the mail today. And she has been chomping at the bit to get at this. But I told her, no, I've got to film it. I want to make sure I film it. And I'm trying to think of a way to um, – maybe I should, maybe I should uh, fund – BC truck building a custom-made knife for somebody. I think that would be a great giveaway. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll probably tinker around with that idea, but we're going to do a video on this thing, but I think that'll be the case. So anyway, what I wanted to say, guys, is um, Will has a sick kid at home, and so he may or may not be on later, but go ahead and tell us about that, bro. Yeah, no, Lincoln's just got a fever, and the missus is watching him and keeping him quiet upstairs and keeping everybody subdued, but I definitely have to uh, do my parenting duties tonight, so I might be online, I might not. Um, we usually do our live show immediately after this, but then we also have another type of live show that we've started doing, which actually is, we've had a lot of people who have watched it. If you get a chance, just click on my name in the chat as it comes by, and you can just hit the subscribe button there, but... Interestingly enough, we'll do it where we drive, since we have to drive to our homestead back and forth on the weekends, we'll do a live stream on the way up talking about what we're going to do, and then we do a live stream on the way home talking about everything that broke. That's, that's awesome. I, I love that. Yeah. I love that. And actually, you know what? One of the cool things that we started doing is uh, throughout the week, we make videos, and we make a video just about every day, <coughs> but people share their stories with us. They'll, they'll, they'll see something that affected them and they'll share a little chunk of their life with us or something that's happened and we're going to start doing at least once a week a, a, a video that just says you know hey these things really stuck out and these are things and stories and chunks of people's lives that need to be heard and um and that way just that that blessing can keep going forward but um just coming back full circle i'm looking at some of the chat and yeah that's what we're going to do hey bc truck 
we are going to fund the creation of somebody's custom dream knife. And uh, we're going to take care of paying for that. And uh, I want I want everybody to see his awesome workmanship. And we're going to film that in just a little bit. But so where are we at? Are, are you going to, you need to take a break tonight, bro? Um, is it, was that to me or to him? Hmm. <laughs> to you. Sorry. Um, I will know in a little bit. Uh, if I'm on, I usually go on at 815 to give everybody a chance to go take a bathroom break because everybody in the chat is going to come over to our channel and things like that. And I want to make sure everybody gets a bathroom break in there because I know that there was some complaints that I went right after like, I can't sit here for two hours. You know, everybody's drinking their coffee and their water and whatever else. Yeah, and, their, and their apple juice. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'll let you guys know. We'll go online. If you're a subscriber, you'll just get a notification. We go online at 815 and we'll go through a bunch of stuff. We've got a lot of stuff going on. I've actually... I, I have to apologize slightly. I've been slightly distracted. I've been checking my phone on and off. Um, if you've been watching the weather up in Wisconsin this morning, a huge line of thunderstorms went through and we lost power up at the homestead. Uh, but my guys who are up there during the week said everything was fine. But then at, just as we got onto this live chat, not one but two severe thunderstorms rolled right over the top of the homestead again tonight. So we'll have to see if there's any damage or anything like that. We've been getting hit with storms one after another, after another, after another. In 40 days, we've had 36 days of rain. Whoa. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, we're going we're gonna to wrap things up. But I'll tell you what, guys. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this show because we're still talking tech. It's just farm tech. And if you don't mind, I think we're going to try to, you know, maybe milk this for a couple more weeks because I need the knowledge. To be honest, I'm selfishly saying... I need the knowledge. I'm reading every one of your comments coming through, and I'm seeing a lot of great stuff that um, I need to uh, be wise and pay attention. Actually, it's, it's one of the coolest things, you know, about, um, you know, George Washington having the 4th of July. He was renowned for having all of his brain trust around him, all these generals and, and, and folks who knew what's what. And he would sit back and listen to everybody. He wouldn't be the boisterous guy in the crowd. He wouldn't be the loud mouth. He'd sit back and listen. And I want to emulate that and be a wise steward of our time, talents, and our treasure. And so do not think that just because your comment wasn't read out loud, uh, it's not being consumed. Because I know for me it is, and I see a lot of you guys interacting. So please make sure that you don't think, oh, he didn't read my comment. Um, it wasn't important. That's not the way I'm looking at this at all. So as we round out the night, guys, we'll... Dude, thank you so very much. I Let me ask you a question. No problem. Anytime we want to talk about this, I said it anytime. Like when you called me today, like, what are we going to talk about? Like, well, we could talk about microphones or whatever. I'm like, well, what are you working on? You go, oh, I'm working on figuring out tractors. I'm like, let's talk about tractors. And like, we started talking and like all this goodness came out. And like, for, we're on the phone for 20 minutes. I'm like, we got to stop. We're going to talk about everything before we get on the air. So I, well, I do have to ask you this. We're getting to the top of the hour here. Is it an ATV? Is it a tractor? In is my it, mind? Where are you, where are you at? We, we've in talked my about mind, In my mind, see, and I'll tell you, I wasn't going to say the money that I had budgeted, but I'm going to tell you, because what I had budgeted in my mind was $10,000 for either the right tractor or a smaller tractor and an ATV or a skid steer and a smaller tractor. Uh, where I am leaning now is a tractor that's got at least 40 or 50 horsepower, at least a bucket, and then I just pause and, and sit back and look at what we need after that because with a tractor with a bucket, I can do everything that I said I needed to do. I can move snow. I can move feed. I can move heavy things, you know, uh, tools. If I got to drive out to the edge of the property, I throw all my stuff in the bucket and we go. Um, and that way I don't think I'll have to spend $10,000 and I'll be able to reinvest that somewhere else or hold on to it for, um, a different reason. Uh, but that, that's, that's where my mind is right now. Can I make two points? Please do. First one is if anybody in the chat or watching the video thinks a tractor is the right way to go, hit the thumbs up. Oh, a lot of people are saying tractor. They have been watching. <laughs> Second item is I think. 40 horsepower, overkill. For a tractor? 25 horse. Well, you know I what's crazy, dude? Okay, I, I got to tell you what's so funny about that. I have a Sears lawn tractor. It is a lawn tractor. It's got like the lawn cutting deck. It's a 24 horsepower stinking 
riding lawnmower. And I know that it's different when you gear it and the weights and all that kind of stuff with a, oh, don't look at me like that. So you guys don't know. He's down here making faces at me because you can't see him because he's quiet. <laughs> 24 so color tractor lawnmower. I don't. I didn't even know they made those. Dude. I guess maybe I'm off. No, I, but uh, come out to, you're going to come out to the farm. We're going to drive the Kubota around for the afternoon, and you're going to give me a list of challenges, and I'll show you all the things I can do with a 25 horsepower tractor. Well, and I'm seeing Barn Geek says tractor. Yes, 25 horsepower is enough. 40 is too much. But I'm I'm looking at my stupid lawn tractor, and I can't cut grass in the high weeds. And I'm like, what what is this? Can we talk about one other thing quick while we're on this topic of lawnmowers? Because you just hit my pet peeve. Like, just yes. like, ooh, boom, like right there. Or should we save it for next week? Uh, let's save it because I really do want to continue talking tractors. I've got I got three weeks before I'm going to even consider buying anything. And uh, I want to make sure that I am listening to all the wisdom from all of you guys. Perfect. All right. With that, guys, we say good night. Thank you, Will. Please do not forget to go over there smash that subscribe button and uh and and we'll be back next week we're talking farm uh awesomeness so will take us out sir i thank everybody for being here i like the fact that we can talk about a diverse number of things we talked about microphones we've talked about how to make money on the internet we've talked about all sorts of technology to improve your lives and different things and things like that but a topic like this is interesting because I like the fact I'm watching the chat over here as it goes by and everybody has great ideas and opinions on this stuff. And it, the best part about it is the tractor world, the farm implement world and how to run your farm. Everybody has great opinions about how it works best for them. And then the thing you need to do, like you said, is listen to what everybody has to say and kind of decide what the right things are. Take it slow. You don't have to buy the biggest thing in the beginning, kind of work your way into it and I think you'll do it right. I, everybody always does. And if you buy an implement and you don't end up using it, guess what? You could probably sell it and get something different, you know, or rent it. So with all that being said, if I don't talk to you guys before the weekend, you guys have a great weekend, of course. We'll try to be live uh, tonight if it works out. Otherwise, you will see us live before the weekend. So make sure you subscribe to us. And give Brad a congratulations. Go find a video, your favorite video from Brad. Go watch that video. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment on it because 50,000, I'm, I'm at 3,000. I can't even imagine the effort that went into making 50,000. So congratulations, buddy. Well, the th well, thank you very much. I, I got to tell you what, it's just been a joy because we've made friendships, lifelong friendships. And uh, I, I, can, I can't even describe it. I never, ever, ever would have thought the internet would materialize in stuff that's tangible and real in our lives in a way that's not you know, I don't, I don't even know, like fleeting. There's, there's people that we, matter of fact, tomorrow I'm making a run out to a buddy's house. His name's Jane all zero. And we're going to, we're going to, you know, help them out there. There there's folks out there who need some stuff and we happen to have some stuff and, and Oh, by the way, dolphin man, that's why I'm not going to be on, um, the Bible devotion tomorrow. Uh, so mama's going to take care of the Bible devotion, but just the idea that, that these things are real and if you're if you're smart and you can you can actually build the community and the rising tide lifts all ships that's one of my favorite you know mottos but the reality is you guys are sowing into us and we're sowing back into you and by doing that we're all getting a little better knowledge and and so thank you again will for sharing because you, you just hit 20 points i never would have ever even thought of Wait till next week when you hear about my pet peeve and the thing that I, I have a big beef about tractors and we'll talk about it next week. But uh, I, probably when we get up the air, I'll start going off on it. But we'll wait till next week to talk. All right. So bye, guys. We'll see you next week. See ya.